Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In this video, I'll show you how to achieve this dynamic shape animation from start to finish. First of all, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I've been wanting to learn Blender and uh, adding 3D to my animation skills. And with the classes and learning path on Skillshare, it's been really easy to learn. If you're interested in learning more animation and motion design, I've got a full list of courses that will teach you everything you need to know to get from beginner to professionals. And it's available completely free on Skillshare. You probably heard of Skillshare by now. They are a fantastic platform with thousands of classes taught by industry professionals. I've been a teacher on Skillshare since 2020, and it's a great platform to learn any new skills from animation to video editing, from graphic design to illustrations. So you can check out many of the amazing classes on animation and motion design there. If you want to explore different possibilities in your career, you can also check out the other classes like illustration, video editing, cooking. There are also classes on business and freelance side of the creative field where you can access completely for free with a free trial. During the free trial, you can watch all of my courses on various aspects of motion design, and you can also check out the other classes on the platform. And if you like it, you can continue with the premium subscription of Skillshare. I've been a paying member of Skillshare since 2018, and I fully recommend it to anyone who are looking to improve and expand their skills. So if you're interested in starting something new in 2025, Click the link in my description box to check out and learn these in-demand skills from the industry top artists who have been in the field for so long and it will save you a ton of time to explore or try things on your own. The first 500 people to click the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. All right, let's get started. First, we need the storyboard for our opener. This project was made for an opener for our newly released course on dynamic geometric animation. So I'm looking for something that's shape-based, minimal style, and lots of room for animation. We'll go on Pinterest and we'll start looking for some inspiration. All right, first let's search for geometric animation. And let's see what we can find. There's a lot of good examples here. This one looks interesting. And then this one is pretty cool as well. After you choose like one of them, you can see on the bottom here, it's going to generate some curated idea that's similar to these ones that you selected. And then you can just keep going down the rabbit hole to search the one that you feel the most relevant for your project or for the storyboard. I think I like this one very much. This one reminds me of our animation. So I'm going to use this one as the base of our animation. Let me just save this image. These are all looking super cool. From Pinterest, you can get a lot of these great ideas and then you can save these on a board. Let's say, let's see what's on my board right now. So those are the ones that I saved and uh, we can use these ones as a base for the storyboard. After we gather all the different inspiration and references on Pinterest, we'll put those inside Illustrator and start working on the storyboard. There are a lot of great animation and composition that I like from the reference. So I'm mixing and matching with the ones I think will be the most effective for our opener animation. Our animation is gonna mainly based on this reference that I found on Pinterest. I really like the grid in the background and I like the color palette as well. Since we're using a similar um, green and uh, yellow color, I can replace these colors with my green and yellow in the course. So essentially I'm taking a screenshot of these scenes from this GIF and then putting them inside Illustrator. These are a couple frames that I took and then we have our color palette here and since it's a opener and it's got a title on the cover of my animation so i need to leave the main space in the center for the title of my cover so i need to build my storyboard based around this main title in the center i really like the grid so i'm putting in a grid in the background of these storyboards and then i'm using a simple shape animation based on this reference here i'm gonna have a circle just gonna slide in from a slope or sliding down and then it's gonna be squashed down into this little circle and then it's gonna turn the entire scene to the right and then the circle is gonna drop and once the circle drop it's gonna come here inside this square just like this in here 
and after it's coming inside the square it's gonna increase the size and enlarge the size to reveal the background being a different color and then everything gonna shrink down we're gonna have a triangle drop down into the center shape here and then once the triangle drop it's gonna become a circle in the black circle we're gonna change entire color of the scene to blue and then this circle is gonna just bounce a little bit inside this medium circle and then it's gonna shoot up once it shoot up it's gonna become this last scene here where you see a little half circle and then there's a little dots that's gonna drop on top of this half circle here so that's gonna be my last scene it's gonna be a short and very minimal animation I want to focus on the cover the message in my opener which is the cover of the section of my courses and each section is going to have a different title so in terms of animation i want it to be needs minimal uh, geographic something like that so this is basically my storyboard i also wanted to test some other color palettes other than the previous one we did this is a great example i found from the internet with really bright colors i really like this vibrant color palette so i'm trying to apply this color onto my storyboard and this is what i get and it's going to have a different vibe, a different feel to the whole scene. Depends on how you like it, you can change the color you want and uh, it's going to give you a completely different feel to your animation. Now that we have the storyboard that we need, we'll go to After Effects to start animating. All right, now it's time to animate. We're going to use the same storyboard that we made in the previous session and then start animating. Let's take a look at what we did in terms of animation. So over here, all these four layers are going to be my first scene. And if I zoom in here, you can see we have a ball animation that's sliding from one side and then sliding down. And we're using a null object to control the rotation of the ball and the ground. So if I hit U, you can see there's a rotation animation that's going on. And then we're gonna change the slope gradually while the ball is going down. And we have a position changes on the ball shooting from right to left. And once the ball hits the spot here, it's going to scale down in sizes. And while the ball scales down in sizes, we're going to show the black panel from the top. And this is going to be my animation of the first scene here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And once we have the second scene here, we're just going to use the same rotation null to control the rotation of the whole thing and then do a slight rotation over here. This is going to be an anticipation. I'm going to change everything to the right so i'm going to anticipate to the left and then go forward a couple frames change everything to 90 degree up so that my ball is not changing in position right now but once everything changed 90 degrees my ball is going to drop from the top as you can see here the position of the ball layer starting from this point we're going to have the ball drop and then you can see there's a smear effect. That's actually what we did with the echo effect. And we put the echo time to 0.002 and then number of echoes at 30. If I change it to 10, we're gonna have less smear. And then if I change it to 30, it's gonna have more smear. And that's essentially the first two scenes. We're gonna have ball coming down on the slope, everything changes in rotation, and then ball shrinking size, and then go right, it's gonna drop down and then smear all the way down. In the transition between the second scene and the third scene, we're going to use a match cut while the ball is going down with some energy. We're going to match cutting it, the ball, to the next scene where we're going to have this other ball in the second scene in this background color shooting inside my square, which is already rotating when it comes in, right? So my square is rotating. It's basically a rotation animation on the square and then the ball drops inside. It's also got the echo effect with the smear effect on it. It's gonna stay there. And then once we hit the center of the square, we're gonna use another null object to control the scale of both the circle and the square to have everything zoom out like this. So you can see I'm controlling the zooming of the square and the circle, that's good. And then everything zooms out like that. And then after a couple frames, it's gonna go back down again. It's gonna go back down again. And then the square is gonna rotate as well. You can see the rotation property of the square over here. They're all doing the motion at the same time. My square is gonna rotate 90 degrees again to be flat on the top. 
And then at the same time, we're going to have the triangle coming in. This is my triangle, hit you, with a position property animation coming down here. And then it's going to shoot down like this. My triangle is going to come down. And once the triangle comes down, we're going to use another match cut over here to change it to the next scene where we have these layers here. So we're going to have this ball dropping down as if this is a triangle. You can see the position changes and then we have the echo effect on the ball again. So the position is dropping down, it's dropping inside the circle. And then we're going to have another null object over here to control the scale of both the inner circle and the outer circle. So you can see over here, I'm using this null to control the size of it. So once the ball drops down, it's going to change some position inside, goes around this black circle. As you can see the motion path here with my position keyframes. And then at the same time, we're going to use a null object to control the scale of everything to have everything zoom in while the circle is rotating, sliding across within the black circle, and then it's gonna shoot up at this point. Once it shoot up outside, we're gonna introduce another circle, smaller circle, with the position property, just having the circle goes up, and then this full circle is gonna become a half circle once it drops down, like this. And then we're gonna have the smaller circle coming down as well. So we're gonna shoot this one up and then introduce the two different circles over here. And then we're gonna have this smaller circle come down onto this half circle. And this is where we're gonna animate the bounces of the white circle coming right, left. It's gonna come oscillating between the two states and then slowly rest it in position. And while the white circle, little circle is going back and forth, we're gonna have this green circle just change in rotation to match up with the two kind of moving together oscillating together and then eventually it's going to stop that's the entirety of our animation let's take a look and see the final product There you have it. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to check out our project file shop for many of the amazing After Effects projects to improve your skills. You can also join our exclusive Discord community to hang out with other motion designers. If you're serious about learning animation and improving your skills and become a professional, check out our Motion Insider membership at motioncircles.com to access our beginner animation courses trusted by 50,000 plus students worldwide. It is the easiest and fastest way to level up your skills and become a professional animator. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.